All right, here we go. Salute to Knicks Nation on this Tuesday afternoon special edition of Knicks Fan TV presented by Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com, use promo code KFTV for 20% off plus free shipping. CP the franchise here and checking in with me all the way from Manila in the Philippines. He's been covering Team Canada on their FIBA World Cup run for Sports 90. He is Arash. Madani Arash, welcome to Knicks Fan TV, man. How you feeling? CP, I'm good, man. It's good to be on with you. Absolutely. So, uh, as I said before we started recording, I was watching Canada's historic comeback and uh, beating Spain 88 to 85. I was actually in Canada watching that game with my Canadian cousins, uh, being arrogant and, and carrying on. But from your side of things, what what did this win mean to the country, to the team, the organization? in beating Spain and, and qualifying for the Olympics. You know, you think about it, CP, and they have not been to the Olympics since Sydney 2000. Like a quarter century. Yeah. Um, and so where is Canada's place in the basketball world? Like no country outside of the U.S. has more representation in the NBA than Canada. And yet, internationally, there may not be a more snake-bitten program that just has fallen on its face all over the place, the narrative of the program that could never get it done. And then they finally did. And they finally did because one of the best in the NBA, regardless of citizenship, led them there. And they did it because one of the biggest villains in the NBA showed what an mf -er he is when push comes to shove and how tough a defender is, how tough a defender Dylan Brooks is and how relentless he is and how bad he wants it. <clears throat> Excuse me, I lost my voice in Jakarta because the air quality is the worst in the world, mm. literally. Um, so you kind of put it all together and, you know, for your purposes, the story of all story is 24 years ago, Rowan Barrett was Steve Nash's running mate on the national team, and he wore number nine. And now Rowan's son wears number nine and has been instrumental in Canada punching its ticket to Paris next summer. Yeah, and you mentioned the last time we were there. They, they were there. It was it was RJ. It was Rowan Senior that that was uh, playing it. with the team, and and RJ did meet with the media after the win, and he he mentioned the fact that he was joking with his dad that this team was going to do it. This team was going to make it there. Have you guys talked to Rowan Senior? I mean, this has got to be a tremendous feeling to see the program taking a huge turn and and seeing RJ be a part of it. Dude, Rowan's the GM of the team. That's right. Rowan's the GM of the national team. Rowan's the one who's had to talk these guys into playing to get them on board with the vision. Rowan's the guy who, I mean, Nick Nurse takes the Sixers job. He flies off to Philly and says, goodbye, Team Canada. Um, Rowan's the one who brought Jordy Fernandez in, uh, the Kings assistant coach, and has made this thing go. It's funny, um, we got a feature on father and son dropping on Sportsnet today um it's 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 an amazing thing that when rj was growing up in the house in the living room in a frame was rowan senior's olympic jersey and rj's like man i just can't wait to get my own up there i can't get to, i can't wait to put mine right next to dad's or move dad's out of the way and he's got the opportunity to do that now what what's been your thoughts on RJ's play throughout this tournament? It's had some ups and downs. Uh, efficiency hasn't been there. Coach Fernandez has called that out. What's been your observations of of RJ in, in the tournament so far? Yeah, more downs than ups. Um, and I asked him about it after the Brazil game, and the first thing he did was he said, "I have to be better." And then what happens against Spain? First quarter when nobody was doing much. RJ scores 11 out of the gate and was really, you know, their tone setter, their engine, et cetera. Um, I don't know, man. I, I tell you what, CP, like you're watching the same games I'm watching. The amazing thing about the FIBA game is just how fast it goes. Yeah, yeah. Like you blink and you're in, you know, you're midway through the quarter right. and you're like, what just happened here? So um, 
I'll tell you this, like Luca's coming up. I don't think that RJ is going to be getting that matchup at all, but their offensive game plan, especially of late, is about basically creating pace off pressure to set up a catch and shoot. And to me, this is going to be about RJ in one corner and Nikhil Alexander Walker in another corner. And Nikhil's coming off the bench. So I think if there is a time, you know, RJ did it in the first quarter. If there's a time for him to really show up, it comes in this quarterfinal game. And you mentioned Luka Doncic, and we got to talk about the the other key player here, one of the best in the tournament, that is Shea Gilgis Alexander, man. When I watch his game, whether it's NBA or at the world stage, he's always the momentum killer or the bailout guy. You know, when the team is stuck in the mud, when they need a basket, when they need to turn up, it's SGA turning it up. And the NBA was in the top 10 in the NBA in clutch scoring. He was able to get it done against Spain once again. What, what's been your impressions of SGA uh, for, for his team in this tournament? No, one of the, to me, one of the stupidest cliches in sports is that you want somebody without a heartbeat. You know, you want your quarterback, you want your ninth inning closer, you want your point guard to not have a heartbeat. Man, SGA, he is flatlined. Like he is, he is a closer. He is a finisher. He's a baller. He is, he understands the moment. And yet, the bigger the stage, the quieter he is. Like this dude outscored Spain in the fourth quarter. Yeah. And you want to, you want a step back move? In a money bucket in the final minute? Yeah, he got it. You want an absurd and one where there was no lane whatsoever? Yep. You want him to knock down free throw after free throw, no rim? You got it. Uh, and then he comes off after hitting a monster shot and just like, okay, like let's just all act like we've been there before. Um, that Team Canada bench, like Dylan was so amped. Olenek couldn't believe it. Shea afterwards was like, okay, job's not done. Um, I, I know it's because he's in Oklahoma City. I get it. They're terrible, whatever. This dude is not a superstar. CP, this dude is on the precipice of being a megastar when he leaves that place. And he's got not just face the franchise material written all over him. He's face the league material. He's He's different. He's different in so many ways, and he carries himself like a megastar, and he is one. And that that's not me waving my Canadian flag. That's me having covered a lot of different sports. That guy could easily slide into what you'd want out of a franchise quarterback. That, that's, that's the kind of kind of DNA mindset makeup that he has. No question about it. And once again, we're talking to Arash Madani, who's covering Team Canada out in in the Philippines, in Manila, in the Philippines for Sportsnet. CP the Franchise here. Salute to everybody in the chat. Hit that thumbs up on free boys and subscribe to the channel. You know, Arash, I, I look at this team, and as they've gone through the tournament, they're one of the best offenses in the tournament. Their defense has been stalwart at times. And they're able to shoot the three ball at a pretty good clip. Has any of that surprised you in, in terms of just watching this team in, in, in as the sample gets larger? Well, I'll tell you this. First day of training camp, August 1, Toronto. All the dudes are there, even the guys who didn't make it. Uh, a whole bunch of extra staff, you name it. First thing new head coach Jordy Fernandez tells him, is if we don't have a defensive first mindset, if we don't if we don't make that our number one priority, we are doing a disservice to one another. We're doing a disservice to this program. And these dudes have bought into that. These dudes are all in on that. And oh man, I want to get this. I want to get the quote right from Dwight Powell today, uh, because this to me is why they're here. This is Powell's quote. We definitely have some elite, world-class 
on ball defenders. And he's right. Um, a clip was circ circulating today from Luca um, with a Mavericks backdrop. He was talking about Lou Dort. He said one of the top three defenders in the NBA. They believe that Brooks and Dort are the two best defenders in this tournament. And when you talk about the Luka matchup, I think those two are primarily yeah. going to get it. I think there'll be some Shea, they'll be, you know, coming off the bench, Nikhil Alexander Walker. But man, you can mug dudes off screens here. Mm. Like the the the, whi the whistle comes on reach ins on the ball. And so where Brooks is really trying to find his way, he's getting in, into foul trouble. He's like, I got to use my eyes more. But they defend like all hell on this. They have fully bought in on this. And that's why they're here. Like we can talk about their three-point shooting. We can talk about their efficiency. We can talk about whatever you want to talk about. But the prime, like primary mission number one is on the defensive end. And uh, and they they're doing it. Yeah, you can see it, man. From the exhibition games on through, their defense has been really tough. And I like how they can potentially match up with Luka Doncic just by throwing. You can throw a Brooks on him. You can throw a Dort on him. And they can play physical, as you mentioned. Maybe it's an SGA with his length. Maybe it is RJ for a stint or two. I've seen, you've seen RJ guard Luka at the NBA level. And, you know, without you know they that. Want to do? Yeah. They want to piss him off. They want to frustrate him. They want to get into his head. They want to, they want to get, get him rattled. Talking. They want it. They want to make Luca Luca, yeah, right? And yeah. if they do that, then it might be a wrap. Yeah, absolutely, man. You know, I look at this team and I watch this team, and all I'm thinking about is the potential. What if Jamal Murray was on this team? They get Andrew Wiggins. I mean, as they shift the focus to 24 in Paris. Do you see some of these other NBA guys from the country, uh, Nebhard, Wiggins, you have Matherin, uh, Jamal Murray, do you, do you see them joining joining this team? Dude, I can't even imagine what the bandwagon's going to be. Like, I wonder if, if Denver lost round one or two and they weren't going to. They were a juggernaut and no yeah. one's going to stop. Like, Jamal came to training camp. Jamal was at training camp, and, <clears throat> you know, he's coming off an ACL. So the combination of ACL, a deep run into June, um, and Jamal's going to do what Jamal's going to do. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that next summer, next summer they're going to be really tough decisions to make on the roster you know there was a time uh shoot when even when they got to the olympics in 2000 outside of nash you know if you were the 11th man on an nba roster you were guaranteed a spot now you may have starters who aren't going to make it think about how insane that yeah. is yeah good good problems to have man because like i said if right if that team gets to NBA full strength, they will have outside of US the, the best roster in the dance. Yeah, but I I and maybe this is recency bias. Mm. Maybe this is just watching the way Spain plays. Um I don't think you want just NBA players at a FIBA World Cup or at an Olympics. Dude, it's a different game, CP. It's officiated differently. It's so much of this is different. Having a little bit of a FIBA sandpaper to you to understand it. Now, Olenek, like Olenek is basically, and this is not a man as a disservice to him. Olenek has played so many games. He's effectively a FIBA player. Like he knows it. Yes. Dwight Powell knows it. Um, but I think just having a little bit of uh, FIBA DNA to you on your roster can can matter yeah and, and as you saw with with usa getting knocked off by lithuania a, a lot of it is you know the continuity these guys being playing together and understanding the fiba game and when you mentioned powell you mentioned olenic one of the things that rowan senior was was quoted on in, in terms of the construction of this program was having the continuity having guys that have that chemistry with each other that have played together before and also understanding that the fiba game is a bit different than the nba so it seems like obviously with those guys 
getting this win and, and moving forward to the Olympics was, uh, was a very special moment. Yeah, yeah. No, this, this, this is, um, like, there was legit emotion. You know, Dwight Powell was in tears. Um, Kelly Olenek, I did a one-on-one -on -one interview with him. And Kelly talked about being a nine-year-old, waking up at four in the morning at Aunt Janine's house and watching Nash and those guys play. And his, Aunt Janine passed two years ago, and he wanted to shout out, you know, one of his relatives who have passed. Uh, that's how much this kind of meant to him. He was thinking about all his former teammates. Um, and these dudes, and I know this may not, this doesn't resonate in the United States. Mm -hmm. Canada is a, is a country with a population of 35, 36, 37 million. Basketball has always been second or third fiddle. Now, the gap is getting smaller. But Kelly said, those guys in 2000 inspired me. He said, part of our goal as a national team is to inspire the next nine-year-old sitting, sitting in the living room. Now, think about that for a minute. Yeah. Think about what what a grown ass man who's been in the league for what a decade now, yeah, more. That's what that's what he's coming at you with at the at the height of his national team career. And uh, I just think that's really neat and really unique and really cool and really special. Special, special run indeed, man. And, and Arash, everybody here is looking for that USA-Canada matchup. So we'll, we'll see if these guys can get through their respective brackets and, and meet up in the finals there, man. And hopefully if they do, you, you can come back and join us to, to break that whole thing down. But I definitely appreciate the time. I'll let you catch up with some on some rest in Manila. And hopefully we can do this again, man. Anytime, CP. Good to be with you, boss. All right. All the best. <laughs> <laughs>